This is an interview uh, today, Saturday, uh, May 25th, 1996, at the Birmingham Surprise Institute with Mr. Walter Gaston of Atlanta, Georgia. Mr. Gaston, as we began this interview, I'd like to ask you what part of the state were your parents from? The southern part of the state. Were they born in Birmingham? If not... Uh, uh, no. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think Selma is my okay. mother. Uh, but uh, the man that I called father, uh, well, was uh, from Mississippi originally. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one sister. Okay. Is she older than you? Yes. Okay. How much education did your parents have? Well, from what I can ascertain, they were both um, educated as far as high school and the first school were concerned. Okay. Were concerned. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I've never been the one to ask about all of that. I'm sorry. We've got to stop. Let's hit that one. Yeah. They're ready for him? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, we'll start back when he's ready. Okay, uh, Mr. Gaston, uh, when you were here in Birmingham as a child, what community did you live in? Oh, the south side of town, south side. Okay. What basically were your racial makeup uh, in that area? It was uh, mostly Negro. Okay. Black. Okay. Colored. And Okay. Occupation during that time? Uh, I was a school kid. Okay, but I mean, people in the area pretty much were on the same economic level, maybe? Well, it was a poorer neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Very poor. <laughs> okay. Okay, and what was that community relationship to the city of Birmingham Police Department? Did you ever see any police patrol in your area be concerned the, about you? The own? immediate area that I lived in, uh, I lived at... Uh, well, you know the address. 3114. Right. So uh, the immediate neighborhood was rather rough. Uh, there were various uh, outbreaks of uh, violence amongst the neighborhood people, but uh, only uh, amongst themselves as a matter of uh, family matters and things of that sort. But various other neighboring neighborhoods, which weren't so rather very large, there'd be a lot of police activity, and I never knew what it was about right. during those days. So. Okay, how did you get involved in the civil rights movement? Now, that's, that's one thing that uh, I always had a problem with. I never did get involved with the civil rights movement, with the civil rights movement. Okay. I've always that's believed in trying to promote civil rights amongst people such as myself and anyone, as a matter of fact. Okay. But the uh, fact is, the day of that moment, I was supposed to have been in school. But a friend of mine, or uh, acquaintance of mine, had told me that earlier that uh, Martin Luther King was in town that day, and that he was going to uh, be there. And I said I wanted to be there too. I wanted to come and find out what it was all about. And because you, I didn't know anything about it. Right. Okay, and when you left school, you were at what, what high school at the time? Oldman. Okay, and when you left school, where did you come? Downtown? Uh, to uh, the park area, okay. the Kelly Ingram Park over there. And um, we walked around the corner, and during that time, the activity was, wasn't easy to view. So we walked around and came in the front of the crowd rather than behind. I thought it would be in the middle of the crowd somehow. And uh, I saw a policeman and all of the activity. So we started walking toward the, well, I myself, I don't know what happened to the acquaintance of mine, started walking toward the uh, activity. And as I approached and got closer, they turned and looked at me and, and uh, I got closer. And I saw it coming toward me, so I turned to leave to go around and get with uh, where the black people were so I could get some information because I knew I wasn't going to get anything from the police. So as I turned and started to walk away, I was grabbed and the rest of it. Uh, grabbed by the police? 
pray about a policeman and and uh, yank toward him. And uh, afterward, I was uh, grabbed and hustled to a uh, white van and bodily picked up and thrown. Well, not well thrown, as a matter of fact. And as I started to step, I was just pushed on in. Okay, but before this happened, uh, when the police grabbed you in the collar, uh, is that when the dog bit you? Did the dog bite you? As near as I can remember, that that happened simultaneously. Did you? Because uh, the 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 uh, the policeman grabbed me. I don't remember what hand, but the dog he he grabbed me with one hand, and uh, well, I could uh, show the, the bite marks and all, but. Uh, when I was so there. you still have the scars? Yes, okay. but uh, um, that that happened simultaneously, and I was surprised because I was walking away. But during that time, the racial air was so thick that I, with whatever it was, that I couldn't uh, really focus to find out what was going on because that was adult activity where I thought then. So uh, I looked. I was looking, but as I looked, I couldn't look up. I was looking at the white, uh, you know, it was always a concentration on white. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the white three-wheel motorcycles coming toward me. And uh, it, it happened so fast, there was nothing I could do except throw up a leg and try to protect myself. And as I was doing that, there I went. Yeah. Okay. You did go to jail then? They took you to jail? Yeah, they're not uh, That's not jail. a regular facility. They took me to the fairgrounds. And uh, a huge tent. And uh, these circumstances were uh, because of the mass arrest. Is that why you had to go out to Fair Park? Is that yes, why? that's what that's what I was told. Okay. And do you remember how long you remained in jail or arrested? No, not that I cannot remember because a lot has happened since then, and uh, the things that have happened prevent me from. Remembering at the moment, uh, it's 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 uh, rather sketchy memory. Okay. So I, I like being rather uh, precise with okay. whatever says. Is there any other person, family member of yours, participate in the movement at all, or get arrested, or go to the mass meetings? No, okay. not that I know about. Okay. Uh, after you returned to school after being arrested, were you suspended? Did I think so. I think so. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I remember being in the auditorium, and uh, the the principal gave uh, good bombasting, and the crowd began laughing. But I was just standing there, rather embarrassed uh, at at the outcome. Okay. Uh, how did your family members react to your participation? Well, they were angry because I didn't attend school that day. Okay. okay. What church were you a member of at that time? Were you a member of the church? I wasn't a member of a church, but uh, the family activity, uh, I was uh, rather instructed to go to church. But often I did not go uh, because of the fact that I'm not a religious person. Okay, well, the church where your parents or your family members were attending, were they involved in the civil rights movement during that time, do you know? They never told me of it. Okay. What church were they going to, do you know, at that time? Uh, uh, I see it, I know where it is, but I don't remember the name of it. Okay. It's, uh, um, I don't remember the okay, name. That's all right. Okay, what do you, what benefits do you, uh, your family, and the community realize as a result of that uh, movement? In your hands? Yes, what benefits were gained? Uh, you don't think that any benefits were done during the century three? The well, all, all of the overall uh, is where uh, gradually. Uh, Facilities were opened, the white-only signs and colored-only signs were removed, but there was always the same racial air, it was all, except among some Caucasian people. Some Caucasian people during that time were openly friendly and uh, inviting as a matter of uh, gaining access to normal community things. 
while uh, most weren't. And uh, the only thing that I could uh, see that actually happened was the toilets became integrated and the water fountains became integrated and gradually various other things because of various influences among certain groups and because of the nationwide pressure that was put upon the Caucasians and the whites and various other races in opening all of those uh, opportunities. And the government is the main thing. All of that brought about governmental and political action yes. that brought all that about. Yes. Now that spurred it, yes. but it's the votes and the political actions and the laws passed that brought all that about. Okay. Okay, if you were, were in control of an organization or a movement of such and could go back and change some things, what would you change? If I could go back to the movement of the past uh, and change some things, what the would civil you rights change? Movement, yes. I. What would I change? Well, I take a look at the form, the shape, the. Uh, this could get me into trouble, but I really believe this, and I really think this. It's not a feeling or anything. Well, this is your, this is your personal interview. Okay, the things that I would change would be a more careful choice of people involved in all of those movements and uh, where the head beatings and all that was concerned. That was necessary uh, as a matter of uh, the laws not being changed anyway, because that would have remained status quo. But the, the things that I would change would be, well, I wouldn't change anything actually, because that'd be entirely hypothetical. And being hypothetical isn't easy for me, uh, except when joking with or, or, or uh, just fantasizing or something, and I don't like fantasizing too much. So I, there's not there's no that I could really say about it without really thinking about it. Okay. But there are too many, uh, well, to be just blunt, crooked people. Okay. Many of the people that were involved and, and had notoriety became too crooked. Okay. Illegal. All right. What is your assessment of the Birmingham movement, or have you been gone too long to really be able to tell what assessment has occurred in Birmingham? Uh, how successful uh, do you think the Birmingham movement was? What were its accomplishments? Uh, what were its failures? Now, you may or may not be able to answer that, answer that question because you've been gone a good part of Birmingham, you may not know. Well, where Birmingham is concerned, the political issues, the civil issues, the business issues, I have no knowledge of because I've been gone for years. Mm -hmm. And I don't uh, really, when I, earlier when I said that the uh, people, or some of the people that were involved became too crooked, and I was talking about the whole United States as a whole not just Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. I mean, uh, there's no, uh, there aren't any particular cases of that that I can mention without causing major concern where my uh, own welfare is concerned in being sued or passing a minute or half okay. or slandering someone and all that kind of thing. I'm okay. not going to do that. Okay. Okay, is there anything else that you would like to add that we have not dealt with at this interview? Anything else, any comments, any statements you want to make of uh, anything that you would like to leave with uh, young people uh, that well, may hear your testimony? There isn't much that I could really say because of the fact that uh, where anything is concerned, there's always the air that uh, black people have done so much for the black people of the country. And, and being called black all the time, and, and being called African all the time, which I'm not. That, that, that makes uh, Africans really don't like me much. So, <laughs> up to date. So, uh, 
there's uh, really not much I can uh, relate to you on that because of the fact that I'm not uh, a popular person where uh, personals are concerned. Maybe because of this, as you say, but uh, I've never had any notoriety. I've never even talked about it. Okay. I've never talked about it with anyone, as a matter of fact. Okay. What about uh, your, you now reside in Atlanta, Georgia? Uh, do you uh, have an assessment? Uh, as you look at Atlanta, compared it to Birmingham, do you have anything that you may want to say about the two cities? Well, the two cities compare, but I cannot really make that comparison because of the fact that I was living here and not here, and occasionally visiting here, but not becoming involved in anything. So uh, the political structure, uh, I can't say anything about it because I'm not familiar with uh, Birmingham's political structure or business structure or anything else about it. Okay. But um, where Atlanta is concerned, uh, it was basically integrated, so to speak, but there was that still racial attitude nonetheless, and now. But uh, since blacks have been pressuring so much and becoming involved in so much, it's eased some. But in 1980, I went to a barber shop that I found was white in the middle of downtown Atlanta and got refused. And that was in 1980? 1980. With a black mayor and everything else. But you and I've, I've been, uh, not because of any rowdiness or anything like that, but just because of racial attitude, uh, had the police called on me while I was sitting in a bar drinking a beer alone, not saying anything to anyone, and thinking about drinking a beer, maybe getting them other than leaving. And there comes a black policeman and said, the management wants me to leave because they reserve the right not to serve whom it is that they don't want to serve. Well, do you think that was really because of color of your skin? Is that, were you the only black in there? I was the only person in there of my color. Yes. Okay, so you still experienced that in the line of Georgia? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you about your visit with us here today. Uh, how do you feel after having seen the statue that is out there for foot soldiers and it shows the images of you and that picture that was taken in 1963 in May. That statue doesn't look like me. It looks like a totally different boy. That looks like an African boy. That's what you feel about it. looks like an African boy? It looks like an African boy. Uh, the color or the features? The features. The lips. The size. You take a look at the picture there and the statue there, the boy is short. I was tall for my age. I was looking down at the dog, but that was his interpretation of the artist, I suppose. But the boy doesn't look like me. And uh, I mean, it's representative of, yes. that's the way I think right. about it. Right. So and it's representative of. I'm wondering still why me? Because I've never had any notoriety whatsoever concerning that picture. Yes. That picture was in the paper, but many other people were too. Yes. Many other situations. Buses, bombings. Yes. But they chose to use the little boy at 15 for that statue. The little boy in age, but not the little boy in size. <coughs> but that's what they chose. <laughs> that's what they chose. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Well, it's... Uh, I really don't know how to say it. Uh, Are you surprised when you found out about it? I was totally flabbergasted. I didn't know what to think. Uh, when I when I first contacted you, I was in Kentucky and uh, I couldn't sleep, so uh, I didn't know what to say. I I, I still I'm not at a loss for words concerning the reasoning that that of. Uh, because of that, or whatever, I don't know. The mayor, the mayor of the city chose that to use as a monument for foot soldiers. He chose that picture to, uh -huh. to be used. Yes. We're very proud of it. 
and I hope you will be too. Uh, and now that we know who you are, we can add a name under there. Which you were the young boy that the sculpture used. Mm. Well, um, I'm still wondering why, after all the information that I had given, and 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 all that uh, all that does is establish me as being a young African boy, which I'm not. You prefer being called a Negro. I prefer being called what I am, a colored. Oh, oh, you prefer you were colored. I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, the, the the main thing that the main complaint that I had with the Negro and the black race is that anytime anyone says color, there's that old racial air of you, you ain't white enough, you ain't white enough, you ain't color. So that's your wishes. Color is mixed race. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything else you feel like you want to talk about in a personal manner or anything else that you'd like to say before we end this interview? Uh, no. Did you I mean, have there's, 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 uh, there are many things that, that uh, I could talk about that uh, make me uh, Okay, well, it's, it's been a pleasure uh, having you here, and uh, I'm very grateful to the fact that we could find you, uh, and uh, hope that uh, you will come back to the Civil Rights Institute and come back to the park. And since you're in the photography business now, you need to come back and get some shots of that after we put your name on it. I think I will. But uh, the photography business that I am in is rather rough and difficult as a matter of subject material and um, selling. If I were working with some company, it would be different, but uh, I'm freelance. So wherever I can sell, whatever I can sell is what I have to do. That's why I drive a truck. Also, <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to make sure money. That's the only way to earn a living at. Right. But uh, although I've, I've studied, I've, I've become very good at it, there's, oh, there's that racial attitude too, that uh, uh, if you're not white, you've got best of a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me. I've got best of a chance of anything. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure. And, uh I hope you come back to see us uh, again. Thank you for your view. Uh -huh.